ഹലോ വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു ലേൺ ഫിസിക്സ് ഇൻ ടുഡേസ് ടോപ്പിക് വി ആർ കണ്ടിന്യൂയിങ് വിത്ത് ദ തേമോ ഡയനാമിക്സ് പോർഷൻ ഓക്കെ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് വി ലേൺ ടെൽ അവർ ഇക്വേഷൻസ് ഓഫ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് മനസ്സിലെ ആൻഡ് സി പി സി വി റിലേഷൻസ് ഓൾസോ വി ലേൺ സി പി മൈനസ് സി വി ഈക്വൽസ് ആർ ദാറ്റ് ടെൽ ദാറ്റ് ഇക്വേഷൻ വി ലേൺ ടുഡേ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വിത്ത് ക്വാസി സ്റ്റേറ്റിക് പ്രോസസ് ക്വാസി സ്റ്റേറ്റിക് പ്രോസസ് ക്വാസി സ്റ്റേറ്റിക് പ്രോസസ് വോട്ട് ഇസ് മെൻ ബൈ ദിസ് ദിസ് പ്രോസസ് ക്വാസി സ്റ്റേറ്റിക് പ്രോസസ് മീൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ പ്രോസസ് ഓർ ദ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ തേമോ ഡയനാമിക് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് വേരിയബിൾസ് ആർ ഹാപ്പനിങ് ഫോർ എൻ ഇൻഫിനിറ്റ്ലി സ്ലോ പ്രോസസ് it's a process which is happening infinitely slow so because we can't identify so the process is changing that is pressure volume thermodynamic state variables are changing or not we can't identify that's so uh, fast so it, it is not a fast process it's a very very slow process process which is happening process which is happening infinitely slow infinitely slow process is called as quasi static process it's a quasi static process means it is an infinitely slow process that is pressure and volume pv suppose we are considering a gas which is having pressure pv and after some time it is changing it to p dash v dash but that process is very slow we can't identify that process so that is called as quasi static process okay that is pressure volume change or temperature change all those things we can't identify very fast that is quasi static process clear what is meant so the thermodynamic state variables are changing infinitely slow process that is considered as quasi static process okay so because of that if we are considering the pressure and volume it is almost very slow process so we can't identify it fast that is it is changing isn't it so here we will consider that it is in thermal equilibrium or in mechanical equilibrium we can consider because it is it is taking long time to change the process so we will consider it as mechanical equilibrium and thermal equilibrium okay clear what is meant by quasi static process so next uh, isothermal process isothermal isothermal means thermal iso iso means same temperature throughout the process temperature remains constant if temperature of the system remains constant then we can say it is under isothermal process okay a th- process in which temperature remains constant that is isothermal process so next is adiabatic process adiabatic process means it is heat energy remains constant heat remains constant there is no a transfer of heat heat is not giving to the atmosphere or taking to the system okay system is not giving the heat energy or it is not taking the heat energy so that is called a adiabatic process next is isochoric process isochoric process means volume remains constant volume of the system remains constant in the case of iso coric process next is isobaric process isobaric process means pressure remains constant okay so these three processes you should identify so what is quasi static process infinitely slow process they are thermal we are considering that the system is in thermal equilibrium and mechanical equilibrium and isothermal process means temperature remains constant that is called a isothermal process adiabatic process means heat remains constant there is no heat transfer of heat to the system or absorption of heat to the system okay then isochoric process means volume remains constant isobaric process means pressure remains constant 
So now we are going to study in detail about this isothermal process and adiabatic process. In the case of isothermal process, see about isothermal process before that also I mentioned many times. Are you remembering about the first law of thermodynamics? When I told you about the first law of thermodynamics, it is delta Q equals delta U plus delta W. Isn't it? Internal energy is a term. U is internal energy. Okay, that internal energy is a term which depends on temperature I told, isn't it? So internal energy is a term which is depending on temperature. So as temperature increases, then only internal energy will be changing. If temperature increases or decreases, then only internal energy will be changing. So if temperature remains constant, internal energy also will be constant. That is, change in internal energy will be zero in the case of isothermal process. That means the whatever heat energy we are giving to the system will be completely converting to work done. Okay, the whatever heat energy we are giving under isothermal condition, it is completely converting to work done because there is no change in internal energy since the temperature remains constant. Okay, clear? Here to attain this isothermal process, temperature should remain constant. So how the process will be happening? So the thermal, the system which should be contained in a perfectly conducting wall, thermal conductivity. So if it is temperature remains constant, this should be a perfect conductor. This should be a conductor. Why it is so? Because the temperature is remaining constant. So heat should exchange in between. Isn't it? Heat should go or it can absorb heat energy or release heat energy. Then only temperature can remain constant, right? So it should be con with a perfect conductor conducting walls then only temperature can remain constant and heat energy can absorb and release will be happening if thermal expansion if it is expansion is happening or if it is isothermal expansion or isothermal compression is happening means heat energy should uh, it should exchange heat energy and one more thing it should be a very slow process so first the, the two conditions which we should check is whether it is the the walls are walls of the container are with whether it is perfectly conducting or not it should be a conductor then only heat energy can exchange between the system and the surroundings and it should be a slow process then only it will get time to uh, does release heat energy or absorb heat energy if expansion is happening means it will be releasing heat energy if it is compression means it will be accepting heat energy from the surroundings Surroundings, isn't it? So it should be a slow process and its wall should be a perfect conductor that is in isothermal process. Okay, so if we are drawing a diagram for an isothermal process, isotherm, if I am PV diagram for a constant temperature is called as isotherms. Okay, so in, in an isothermal process, if I am considering how the graph will be, it will be like this. Okay, so this is the graph for an isothermal process, pressure volume P1, V1, this will be P2, V2. This will be the diagram for an isotherm, isotherm, In the isotherm means pressure volume graph for an isothermal process. Okay, so this is what you should understand in the case of isothermal process, clear? Now about adiabatic process. Adiabatic process means heat energy should remain constant. That means how the system should be system should be maintained with a perfectly non-conducting wall. It should be done with a perfectly non-conducting wall. Then only it can exp uh, this, it won't be releasing heat energy or ex absorbing heat energy, isn't it? Heat energy should remain constant. That means no absorption or release of heat energy should happen. That means it should be with a perfectly non-conducting wall. And next what should be? It should be a very fast process it should be. Then expansion or compression should happen very fast. Then only temperature will vary in between. 
be inside that, isn't it? And heat energy is not releasing or absorbing heat energy. So, there should be a very fast process and it should be with a non-conducting wall. Okay. And here, in the case of adiabatic process and um, see how we can explain the ideal gas equation. In this process also we didn't explain the ide adiabatic this ideal gas equation, right? What will be the idea uh, ideal gas equation in the case of isothermal process? Ideal gas equation for an one mole of gas, if I am considering, it is PV equals mu R T. Isn't it? This mu is the number of moles. So, if it is 1 mole of gas, if I am considering, it will be PV equals RT. In the case of isothermal process, in isothermal process, PV equals R is universal gas constant, T is temperature, that is a constant in the case of isothermal process. So, PV will be a constant in the case of isothermal process. But in the case of adiabatic process, temperature is remaining constant, isn't it? So, delta Q is, delta Q is equal to 0 over there and how we can explain the adiabatic process here PV to the power gamma equals constant. This is the condition for adiabatic process. In, that, in the case of adiabatic process PV to the power gamma equals constant. What is this gamma? Gamma equals Cp by Cv specific heat capacity at constant pressure divided by specific heat capacity at constant volume that is adiabatic process. In the case of adiabatic process PV to the power gamma equals constant or in terms of T and V also we can write that is TV to the power gamma minus 1 is constant. Okay, that, that also another equation for adiabatic process. Okay, in pressure and volume when we are considering PV to the power gamma minus 1 is a constant and in the case of adiabatic process or we can write in terms of T and V, TV to the power gamma minus 1 is a constant. So, you clear isothermal process and adiabatic process, I will tell you once more, in isothermal process temperature should remain constant. Okay, and then if temperature is constant, internal energy change in in, change in internal energy will be zero. Okay, if change in internal energy is zero, delta Q equals delta W. That is, first law of thermodynamics will change in this way. Okay, and in isothermal process, what should be the condition? The, the walls of the container system should be perfectly conducting and it should be a very slow process and the graph will be isotherm will be like this ideal gas equation will changing as PV equals constant. In the case of adiabatic condition heat energy remains constant throughout the system now throughout the process that means uh, PV to the power gamma is a constant where gamma equals Cp by Cv. The conditions to maintain adiabatic conditioners the walls of the container or the system should be perfectly non-conducting it should not be a conductor because heat energy can't transfer in between. Thermos flask when we learned about the thermos thermos bottles in last chapter that is thermal properties of matter I told you about the adiabatic condition that is no heat energy is transferring from the system to the surroundings that is about the thermos flask thermos bottle okay so here and it should be a non-conducting wall and the process should be very fast so then only it will be it can uh, the temperature will be varying but without changing the heat energy okay so isochoric process process means volume should remain constant and isobaric process means pressure remains constant. Okay? So, now we are going to draw the PV diagram for adiabatic condition. Then, then we will compare how the uh, adiabatic and isothermal process PV diagram how it will be. Okay? Now, we are going to find out the pressure volume diagram PV diagrams in the case of isothermal process and adiabatic process.
isothermal process means temperature remains constant i already told you about the pressure volume diagram how it it will be for an isothermal process see here it is p and here it is v pv diagram will be like this okay so in a uh, separately while we are, we are that's observing this adiabatic diagram adiabatic pv diagram or isothermal pv diagram you can't feel that difference okay see this is p1 v1 and this is p2 v2 okay this is adiabatic process pressure volume diagram will be like this okay here what you understood from these two diagrams okay so here here in the case of adiabatic diagram slope will be more more slope here slope will be less compared to the adiabatic process it will be gamma times slope of isothermal process in isothermal process how much is the uh, slope it, it will be gamma times more for adiabatic process so derivations and all not required for you actually in derivation how it will go is uh, uh, slope means here what will be the slope dp by dv okay in both the cases we, we should find out dp by dv we know in isothermal process pv equals constant for an ideal gas here in pv to the power gamma is a constant so we are, we are finding out dp by dv gamma times the slope of isothermal graph like that you will get so it's not required for you to find out the derivation but you just understand that the slope of adiabatic process will be gamma times the process the slope due to isothermal process okay so if i am considering an expansion okay if i am considering an isothermal expansion expansion while i am considering this is v and this is p this is x from here p1 v1 if it is starting from here yeah it will be in the case of expansion isothermal process will be above that and adiabatic process will be below and in the case of compression so compression means volume will be greater and then volume will be decreasing so it should start from here and in the case of compression isothermal isotherm will be down isothermal process and adiabatic process will be above okay so this is what happening in the case of so if i am considering at the same point this will be the condition for an adiabatic and isothermal process okay so as the it, uh, it should it is starting from the same point volume and if it is under isothermal process means it will be below that and, and adiabatic process means it will be above that okay this is what happening in the case of compression and this is what happening in the case of expansion any one thing you can remember as usual usually in all these kind of things i will tell you to remember any one here also i saw the expansion you can think adiabatic process means in expansion adiabatic process will be below that okay below the isothermal curve okay as temperature increases for different for a particular uh, conditions that is if temperature is increasing for first i am drawing the isotherm for uh, t1 and then next i am doing for the isotherm for t2 t3 etc t1 greater than t2 greater than t3 in that case how the pv diagram will be this is v and this is p as the temperature decreases this slope will be coming it will be coming more close this is for t1 this will be for t2 this will be t3 like that it will be coming more closer to the origin like that it will come this and all we will learn in the next chapter okay so now you understood all those things what is about the pv diagram because here in uh, after that we will when we are starting the heat engines we require isothermal and adiabatic pv diagrams now you understood in the case of expansion isotherm will be above and uh, adiabatic will be below in the case of compression adiabatic will be above and isothermal will be below okay clear so the next topic is work done in an isothermal adiabatic isobaric isochoric process all those things we will learn so that one i'll take it in the next class okay so i hope all of you understood all those things in, in today's topic and if you like the channel please don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching bye